Joe Biden, who is ostensibly on the verge of becoming his party's nominee for the president of the United States, is now trying to play damage control, not only because of his declining cognitive capacity, but additionally because of a sexual assault allegation that was made against him by a woman named Tara Reid, who worked for Biden's Senate's office in 1993. And the media has been relatively silent about these allegations, which is interesting because they went absolutely bat over the Kavanaugh allegations, which, as we'll talk about, were nowhere near as probable as the allegations against Joe Biden. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. I'll just be straightforward with you here. I'm going to keep drawing parallels between the case with Christine Blasey Ford and Kavanaugh because... This case is still believed to be true by so many people on the left, this accusation against Kavanaugh, which is probably the most baseless accusation since Eve accused Adam of cheating, but their mouths are virtually shut with this case. They don't want to report on it. They refuse to ask the Democrats campaigning with Joe Biden, hoping for a VP spot about it, which just proves for the umpteenth time that they don't actually care about women or victims of sexual assault. All they care about is forwarding their political agenda. And if they get to use these women and these cases as pawns, then, you know, so be it. So we'll just dive right in to the seven reasons to believe that Joe Biden is a predator in no particular order, starting with reason number one, Tara Reid worked in Joe Biden's Senate office in 1993. And you might be thinking, well, so what? Why does that matter? Well, it matters because this is the first step. This is the first step to establishing the credibility of this particular allegation. And credible can be defined in two ways. It can be defined as just being capable of being believed, or it could be defined as being worthy of being believed, or in other words, being trustworthy. And if we use the first one as the operative definition, then every allegation like this would be considered credible, since we know that men sexually assault women. And so when we're presented with an allegation of a particular man sexually assaulting a particular woman, we can kind of think to ourselves like, okay, yeah, I could see that happening. The opposite of this would be if your dog started speaking fluent Portuguese or if CNN accurately covered one of Trump's press conferences. Like this is where we get the word incredible. It is the opposite of credible. It means that it is impossible to believe. There's no way. And Typically, when we use that word, it has a positive connotation, like, wow, that performance was incredible. It was so good that it's hard to believe that it happened. But when the left uses the word credible, that's not actually what they mean. What they want to do is allude to the operative definition being the better definition, which is being trustworthy or being worthy of being believed so that they can convince the masses that there's some legitimacy to their claims. But then if they're like seriously called out on it, they can just deflect back to, you know, the first definition. And uh, we'll get more into just how credible these allegations against Joe Biden are. But I just wanted to bring this up to to remind you that when Kavanaugh was accused of sexual assault, everyone on the left kept spamming the phrase, credibly accused. Oh, he's been credibly accused. And the reason for that was literally because Christine Blasey Ford was giving her testimony, you know, in that quiet half cry voice, but her story was quite literally incredible. So with Biden's case, the allegation is basically that he pushed Tara Reid against a wall and then he kissed her and then he put his hands where they were not supposed to be. And Biden has been silent about this allegation, but his campaign has come out to deny it. But what's very important about this, and we'll get into this more a bit later, is that Tara Reid claims to have filed a sexual harassment complaint about this. And if that that's true, then that record would purportedly exist in Joe Biden's Senate papers, which are currently in the possession of the University of Delaware. But the biggest point is that Tara Reid knows where she was when it happened. She knows that she told other people around her around the time that it happened. All of these people are now coming forward and corroborating that story. And we know just from watching the way that Joe Biden acts in public that the guy's a creep. We've got all of that, but the media still silent. But with Christine Blasey Ford, she had none of those details. She had no corroborating witnesses. She didn't know where it was. She didn't know when it happened. Nothing. Yet the media literally covered that story nonstop for months. Oh, she's credible. We must believe all women. Let's put her on the cover of Time magazine. And there are still people who believe that that's true. There are people that still believe Christine Blasey Ford is some sort of brave feminist icon. And we have to say this much about Brett Kavanaugh. Regardless of his politics, maybe he's not as conservative as you would like. That man is a hero. That man is one of the bravest men alive today. He went out there swinging in. He never flinched. And he's truly, he's a king. A very important part of being a man is being able to look at other men and award them king status to reinforce desirable traits or behavior by awarding them with this sort of uh, emblematic royalty. It's very important. But anyways, we'll keep talking about the accusation and how it becomes more credible. But that's the first detail to note, that she was working in this office in 1993 and she claims to have filed a sexual harassment claim, which ostensibly exists on record. This gives us a timeline. This is our frame of reference. So from there, 
we get into reason number two, which is that Tara Reid is a Democrat. Tara Reid is a lifelong Democrat. I mean, she supported Bernie Sanders in the primary, but presumably she would much rather have a Democrat in office than have Donald Trump for another four years. So given her historic political affiliation, I think we can say that she probably wouldn't want to hurt Joe Biden's presidential prospects unless he had done something to her in a way like she's alleging that he did. And compare this to Christine Blasey Ford, who was attending anti-Trump protests, who was attending the Women's March. And this isn't to say that what she did was politically motivated. I, of course, would never suggest such a thing, but it is to say that at the very least, what she did helped forward her political interests, whether she intended for that to happen or not. And moreover, Tara Reid has people that can corroborate her story. She claims to have told her brother about the incident when it happened. Her brother comes forward and says that this is true. One of her neighbors has come forward and said that they discussed it together in the mid-1990s. And we even have now footage of her mother calling into Larry King in 1993 to talk about the incident. And the transcript of that conversation corroborates her story to a very large degree. And coincidentally, that particular episode has been removed from the Google Play catalog, which has all of the episodes of the iconic Larry King live program. But for some reason, that was removed. What a strange coincidence, but it doesn't matter because you can still find the footage online. But what's important about this is that Tara Reid has people that are corroborating her story. And more importantly, they're corroborating her story years before she told the public about it. And you compare this to Christine Blasey Ford, virtually no one was able to corroborate that story. Her best friend, Lisa Kaiser, came out and said straight up that it probably didn't happen. But the media, the Me Too movement, all the leftist politicians, they presented the story as true. The story was evidence of rape culture. But with the Tara Reid story, which is vastly more credible, we hear virtually nothing. They have been dead silent. And that brings us to the next reason, which is that uh, the media are covering for Biden. CNN has only published a few articles about this story, but they've all been favorable to Joe Biden. No one has asked Joe Biden about this allegation. No one has asked any of his prospective VPs about this allegation. That episode of Larry King Live was coincidentally removed. And also, very interesting, if you run a search in a news database for Brett Kavanaugh in 2018, you get over 238,000 results. Run the same search for Christine Blasey Ford, you get about 80,000 results. Now, run the same search for Tara Reid in both 2019 and 2020, since she first went public uh, with the story in April of 2019, you get 342 results. 340, less than 500. CNN alone had more articles than that just about Kavanaugh. They had like 700. And even the headlines that they run about this story are still somehow twisted to make Republicans look bad. And of course, we know that the reason that the media is covering for Biden is the same reason that the media viciously and without brain attacks President Trump, and that is because they have a political agenda. They don't like Donald Trump. Donald Trump represents everything that they hate about this country, and maybe they don't like Joe Biden that much, but they know that they would much rather have a Joe Biden than they would a Donald Trump, especially because Biden might end up stepping down and being replaced by a much more progressive and female vice president. So just keep that in mind. I mean, obviously we know this, but Really think about how the media works. These people are not the hardworking, honest reporters that we think of, you know, with the hat and the pad of paper and getting the story. No, these people are liars. They are propagandists and they have no morality or principles. Their ultimate goal is to subvert the United States of America to implement their worldview. That's really what it comes down to. You should expect nothing more from them. If Biden had nothing to hide, the media would be the first to showcase that. They would be all over it, showing it to the masses. But they know Joe Biden. They know creepy Joe. So they're quiet. And uh, that leads us to reason number four, which is speaking of hiding things, we have the Delaware papers. We mentioned them earlier. Basically, Joe Biden gave his Senate papers to the University of Delaware. And purportedly, if the sexual harassment complaint made by Tara Reid actually exists, as she claims, then it would be in those papers. But the University of Delaware has said that they will not allow anyone to access those papers until two years after Joe Biden retires from public office. And if Joe Biden thought that the complaint wasn't there, you'd expect him to be demanding that the papers be released by the university, but he hasn't done that. He has been quiet. He hasn't even been asked about it by the media. But you compare that to someone like Kavanaugh, Brett Kavanaugh, Justice Brett. He could not wait to defend himself in public. He was ready to go. Dude was pulling out old calendars and whatnot because Kavanaugh was acting like an innocent man. Joe Biden is acting exactly like a guilty man because if he were innocent, he would want those papers released to prove that there was no claim which would prove Tara Reid to be a liar, which would destroy her credibility. And that actually brings us to the next reason, reason number five. She's inviting people to scrutinize her claims. She's been asking people to investigate her claims. And if you compare this to someone like Christine Blasey Ford, who was hiding behind her lawyers and the media, who called anyone who didn't believe her a sexist and a terrible person who promotes rape culture, it's obvious that the behavior is categorically different, not just between Tara and Christine, but between the way that the media reacted under each case. And number six, Tara Reid faces prison if she's lying because she's now filed a formal criminal complaint against Biden. And that is something that Christine Blasey Ford never did with Kavanaugh. So what this tells us is that Tara Reid is confident enough in her story that she'll risk legal consequences if it turns out that she isn't telling the truth. Whereas Dr. Ford just wanted to answer questions from an incredibly biased set of congressmen. And the last reason, 
because we're talking about Joe Biden here. Like, I mean, need we say more? We know the way that this guy acts. Biden has a long history of inappropriately touching people in public on camera. Just imagine what his behavior is like in private. Do you think it gets better? Do you think it just stays the same? Like, logically, it could only be worse because everyone behaves in public in a much more socially acceptable manner than they do in private. And Joe Biden in public is still kissing people and touching them and smelling children's hair. Like, this guy is weird. So we can only assume that if he's okay with the cameras catching all of that, he probably has a set of behavior that he reserves for when the cameras aren't rolling. And that's probably much worse. Like, people tend to spread this idea of, oh, an individual in the privacy of their own home. And you've all heard that. But while it's true that people can behave differently depending on their environment, they're still the same person. And that same person is going to be influenced by all of the ways that they choose to act. And that will inevitably affect their public behavior. So since we know that in public, Joe Biden is already far too close for comfort, like we can only imagine what he's like when the cameras are off, the type of person that he actually is. But that aside, we also get to learn more about the types of people that are occupying Washington and our media when the cameras are rolling and how that compares depending on what's politically advantageous to them at the time. Because it seems as though they're standing against sexual harassment is inconsistent. It seems as though their stance on always believing women is inconsistent. I mean, the woman who wrote a whole book about the whole Kavanaugh thing now says that believe all women is dumb. So it seems that the only consistent principle that they have is doing whatever it takes to forward their own agendas at the expense of the well-being of the people of the United States of America. Yo, quick favor to ask, help your boy out, leave a thumbs up on the video, leave a comment on the video, Subscribe to the channel, which contains this video and also other videos. This is my video. There are many others like it, but this one is mine. Without me, this video is useless, quite literally. Without this video, I am useless in a different capacity. That hits close to home. Am I useless without this video? No, because I have other videos. Ha <laughs> ha. But anyways, uh, subscribe, like, comment, turn on notifications, share the video with your friends. All that fun stuff. Let's go Joe, but also let's go Trump. If, you, if you're familiar with the joke that we do about Joe Biden, you get the point. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.